ਨੇ ਮਹਿਲ ਆਰ ਆਬਵੀਅਸਲੀ ਨਾਟ ਜੀਓਗ੍ਰਾਫੀਸ what is it that we call as holy <coughs> that which is untainted uncorrupted hmm? and obviously you call that as holy because there is something within you which gives you that definition there is something within you which demands cleanliness there is something within you which does not like taintedness corruption conditioning what you call as holy is demanded by something which is of the same holy nature and is already present in you had you not been holy at all you could not have demanded the holy you would have been satisfied with all the dirt and filth that comes along in life hmm? but we dislike all that it becomes a load on the mind we do not like it we remain dissatisfied we want something clean steam like this sheet of snow all around that very urge firstly means that the holy resides within us now this is a tricky situation then if the holy resides within us why are we unclean our essence is holiness from where does the unholy come there is a clear contradiction there is a clear paradox essentially you are holy how can then life be unholy so when you meet a contradiction like this obviously you have to reject one of the statements if two statements contradict each other both of them cannot be simultaneously true one of them have have to be rejected you can either say well there is nothing called the essential there is nothing called the center or the core and there is nothing holy about our existence if there is show it to me can you demonstrate or display it and it will be very difficult to demonstrate display or convince that essentially we are holy and so you have an easy option available which is to discard the first statement itself and say that there is nothing called holy within this haphazard <coughs> random frustrating life is all we have life is nothing but a spread of unholiness you can do that you can reject the first statement <coughs> or you could say that i have said that essentially i am divine essentially i am clean 
and that directly implies that all that appears unclean is just a myth, an illusion. It is to be rejected, falsified. What do you do with a statement that is incorrect? You reject it. What do you do with a perception that is an illusion? You reject it. Is it not? So there can be another type of mind which can then say that I am not contended with this humdrum, unclean, stinking state of affairs. I reject them because essentially I am holy and if I am essentially holy, how can life be like this? I reject it. I reject it. Hmm? This rejection cannot happen if firstly you do not get a glimpse of the true. You are rejecting something by calling it false, right? It is only the closeness of the true which gives you the power, the courage to reject the false. Otherwise, you will keep on accepting the false helplessly. slavishly, without any possibility of redemption, you will keep on accepting it and you will call it surrendering to fate. You will say, well, this is all that there is. What can we do? Life is like this for me and for everybody else. It has always been like this. It is like this. And I do not foresee any possibility that something can change even in the future. So you can go on living. Closeness of truth is required. Hmm? Closeness of truth is required. Now, truth is by definition the only element that there is. So, what do we mean by closeness of truth? Does truth ever go far away? Yes, truth does go far away to the one who is living in the falls. For him, even though truth is really close, but it becomes apparently very, very distant. Being close, it appears to be very distant. What is meant by then association with the holy? Association with the holy means in this false life is there a possibility of coming in contact with a situation, a person, a book or anything else that the mind can sense, an environment maybe which reminds me of my essentially true nature. That is association with the holy. Association with something, somebody, someone, the presence of whom reminds you of your own internal <coughs> truth whose presence is a proof, a validation that if it is possible in one case, then it is possible for me as well. That is what gives you the courage to reject the false. Otherwise you are caught. There is the force of situations, home, family, office, society, etc. 
education, earning a livelihood. Hmm? And you are in the middle of all that. And there is that occasional faint call from within. And there is that gnawing feeling of discontent. You do not know what to do. No other world exists. You are in the middle of your situations, right? You cannot go anywhere else. And in the middle of this situation, you also don't feel satisfied. Stuck. Most people will take an easy way out. They'll say instead of rejecting this and taking so much trouble, why not simply reject the first statement? Why not simply reject the possibility of holiness? Why not just say that this is life, full stop? Eat, sleep, drink and be merry. This is life. There is nothing more to it. Don't even talk about it. It's dangerous. So they take this route out. Because we are stuck and we are hopelessly stuck. There is nothing around us which offers us any kind of help. And even if we try to rise up a little, from our own inner conviction and inner sense of motivation, there are a thousand forces outside that suppress this motivation. So we are caught. Nothing is there to help. What then is association with the holy? It's a helping hand. And remember this helping hand does not take you away to another world or another land. It only helps you do what you have always wanted to do. It only helps you realize what is your own deepest desire. Your own deepest desire is of freedom. That is association with the holy. Are you getting it? Hmm? That has been called as heaven. Heaven and hell obviously are for the mind. They do not have any existence elsewhere. So heaven is a situation in which the mind gets what contents it deeply, a relaxation. That relaxation is not possible in our otherwise agitated life. Common life is sheer agitation, right? provocation, agitation, excitement and the resultant frustration. That is heaven. Company that on the one hand relaxes you, on the other hand gives you the courage that it can happen. It is not impossible. The situation is not hopeless. I can be free. My deepest dreams were not just nonsense. They were there to be realized. They can be realized. And what is your deepest dream? Not the dream that you start 
assimilating from here and there. The deepest dream is to just be what you are, really are. And the world gives you a thousand dreams, but not this one. This is your own original dream. Heaven is the moment when you realize that this dream is possible. Heaven is the moment when you clearly see that in this hateful world, love is possible. And not only is it possible theoretically, it is possible for you. It's there. Hmm? It doesn't happen on its own. Because you being what you are, are just stuck. It happens when per chance, in the middle of your bonded world, just by chance, I'm saying, you encounter a glimpse of freedom. You encounter the music of love. That is heaven. You're struggling. Laboring. Somehow carrying yourself on. Hmm? Trudging, taking life as treasury. You had given up all hope. And then the hope is rekindled. That is heaven. And not only is it a hope that something can happen in the future. It is there for the taking. Extend your hand and take it. That is heaven. And correspondingly, now you know what is hell. That's easier to appreciate, right? That appears less of a concept. It appears more real. Hell. We know what hell is. Hmm? Pretty close. It's sometimes our residential address. <laughs> All that convinces you that just this is life. The company of forces that tell you not to fly too high, that tell you that compromise is the name of the game, that tell you to play safe and remain secure, that tell you that the world is a fearful place and you must be afraid. You must be concerned about yourself. That tell you that you were born to follow practices and patterns. Company of such voices is hell. That's it. Really? 
what is the company of holy Paul's will never admit that I am just a shadow. Hmm? It will say nothing but me is there. The world itself is heaven. When is the world heaven? When you realize that the world. is like a door a gateway to the beyond now it is heaven the beyond is not heaven remember because beyond there is no mind and heaven and hell are in the mind the world is heaven when the world is a gateway to the beyond the world itself is hell when the world becomes an objective reality in itself i am all when this is what the world says that i am all that there is then the world is hell hmm? see snowing and it's not comfortable out here is it but there is something in your heart which will bear all this had there been only snow without that thing in the heart the world is filled and when there is the world plus that thing in the heart then it is heaven, heaven. the world would always be hell if it is just material but that thing that that hmm? that is the association here yes 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 so, so when you have someone in front of you or a situation like this in front of you which sparks that thing it is heaven that is the association of holy that is probably why the indian sages built all their holy places on the himalayas so that there is more possibility of holiness like this hmm? one thing is that, that when you said that that holiness is essentially inside, is there yes, yes. then you also asked this then that why this disconnect is there why there is an effort to connect to that it is essentially there then why this disconnect you see when there is a true and there is a false the false means that which is not it is not so the question that why did it, why did it arise from where did it come when it is not how can it come from anywhere when it is not how can it come from anywhere from where does illusion come nowhere from nowhere go and ask illusion when you are deluded bring the illusion in front of you and ask from where did you come what will you find that's a there is no answer in fact the moment you ask this question the illusion is, the illusion is God. 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 so from where did the illusion come in the moment God. of asking the question the illusion is already gone so from where did it come i'm not asking i'm not asking the question what does the question symbolize presence okay. remembrance 
remembrance, presence, or attention. That is it. That's from where it comes. So the disconnect doesn't really exist. The disconnect doesn't really exist. Had it really existed, you could have talked to it, dissected it, done something about it. But the moment you want to talk to it, it is gone. It is not there at all. Hmm? For you, the one who is asking the question, does any illusion exist? So which illusion are you referring to? That doesn't exist. The one that doesn't exist. The one that you don't ask. But that presence of holiness will be realized in the situation which is holy. Even if the situation is not holy, you will realize it through your frustration. <laughs> <laughs> See, why are you frustrated? To whom? You are living in a loveless world. Now, why are you frustrated? The world is loveless. <coughs> That's it. Now, why are you frustrated? Because essentially, right? So that is the proof of the holy within you. Your frustration is the proof of the holy within you. Do not think that only a holy man or a holy book or a holy situation or a holy place is a proof of holiness. The stink that arises from within, all the frustration that we experience, hmm? all our tears of helplessness, they are the proof that holiness exists and we are missing it. Had you not been missing it, how could you have been frustrated? And that thing within, that, that movement within, is heavenly. Hmm? I was missing it since so long, and here it is. This is heaven. So, it means that it's something holy, but my attempt to limit it in a boundary, बांधने का जो अटेम्प्ट कंटिन्यूअस अटेम्प्ट है मतलब अपने अंदर उसको अपने अकॉर्डिंगली उसको देखना वही एक हेल है सब कुछ ना हेवन है ना हेल है हेवन हमारे लिए इसलिए है क्योंकि हम सत्य से दूर हैं जब दूर होते हो ना तभी कुछ हेवन लगता है हमने कहा वर्ल्ड इज अ गेटवे टू द बियॉन्ड बियॉन्ड देयर इज नो हेवन और हेल Beyond, there is neither heaven nor hell. There is just an empty stillness. Heaven is for the one who has lost his way and suddenly gets a guide. Hell is when you have already lost your way and there are voices around that are saying, you cannot go back. There is no home. Hmm? A point comes when there is neither heaven nor hell. It's 
So from hell to heaven and then beyond. From heaven to hell and then beyond. The very thing that was craving for heaven, the very thing that was suffering in heaven was like a balm upon the suffering. That very thing is now very peacefully retired, gone, beyond, finished. <laughs>